Hi guys, welcome to my video tutorial on how to make not just any nail video tutorial, but amazing nail video tutorials. Whoa, it's like a paradox of video tutorials. First things first, I use an actual camera, which means that I don't film with my iPhone or Android phone or any other kind of phone. Sorry, Zach. And therefore, I do not use an app. My camera may look profesh, but I assure you I'm not an actual photographer and I rely on Google to teach me all the things. You don't need to use a big fancy looking camera like this one here to learn anything from this video. Even a point and shoot camera would apply to what I'm going to show you today. But if you are planning on shooting and editing videos with your cell phone, then you should probably just stop watching right now unless you want to see my cat. This is a black piece of foam board I picked up at Michael's. You can get it in a few different colors like white. And lots of people use hollow or sparkly backgrounds which can create a nice blurring background glitter effect. I tend to just use these sparkly backgrounds for nail photo shoot backdrops. You can find these sparkly backgrounds at Michael's or most other craft stores. They cost between 50 cents to a few dollars per sheet. Personally, I like to use the black foam background because it's not a problem if you make a mess on it. Every now and then I'll have some nail art casualties in the form of polish all over my black foam board. So when that happens, I just move it around. Or flip it over. Well, that side's already ruined, so never mind that but also because we don't want people to get too distracted by the sparkly awesomeness and instead have the nail art itself pop in your face. It's up to you what background you film on, but any of these options are probably better than a paper towel. I can't use natural daylight because as you can see, I'm literally in a cave or a back room of a condo that doesn't have any windows and I live in Canada, which means that there's no sun ever. I only use two light sources and basically they're bulbs that I picked up from my local photography store. These two bulbs are 5200K which means 5,200 degrees Kelvin, which is a measurement of temperature color. So while 8,000 K is really blue in color, 3,000 K is warm and yellow. 5,200 K is somewhere in the middle and is said to be the closest to simulating daylight. I screwed these two light bulbs into two very standard desktop lamps that I picked up from Home Depot. I actually don't use a light box. I tried it once and I wasn't liking how it diffused the light so I stopped using it and my cat started using it. Before I get into my camera let's start with the tripod. This one's mine and it's more heavy duty than your average tabletop tripod and therefore more expensive but you'll see why I think it's worth it soon. With this tripod it's very easy to adjust the height change the camera angle, and adjust the camera rotation. Look at all the measurement thingies. This one also extends into a full-size floor tripod. So here's an example of a crappier but much cheaper tabletop tripod. It tips over way too easily with a full-size heavy camera and lens like mine. After a couple of months of use, the joints started to give out and crack, and now some of the pivot turny thingies are permanently loose and I can't tighten them at all anymore. Also, this tripod can only be adjusted so high and for my camera setup this means being way too close to the nail for my lens to be able to focus. And now for my camera. It's a Nikon D5300 and there's a lot of buttons. If you're not using a DSLR, then this probably won't look familiar. But just so you can see, there's a whole bunch of options in the menu, never mind the actual buttons on the camera. Ooh, shutter speed, aperture, ISO. 
and a bunch of other stuff. At least for my camera, I know I need to make sure that the manual movie settings are on. This allows me to change a bunch of things like light exposure and aperture in the middle of filming. Another thing is to check out what your frame size or frame rate is. So I always choose the highest, which is 60p, which basically means 60 frames per second, which means it's going to look the smoothest. There's movie quality, I just leave it as normal, and a bunch of other things you can choose. With my camera, see how it's way too dark? I just change the ISO to a higher number. You can also change your shutter speed or aperture while you're in this screen view, but I won't go there for now. Now for lenses. See how far back my nails are from the actual camera, yet how close they show up on the screen? That's because I'm using an 85 millimeter lens. This lens is more powerful than the standard macro lens that's sold with this camera, which is a 40 millimeter lens. I'm gonna show you the difference between an 85 and a 40 millimeter lens. So here's my 40 millimeter lens. I've snapped it in. And even though my hands are at the same distance of the camera, look how far back they are on the screen. I prefer the nails to be much more zoomed in, but with these kinds of macro lenses, they don't have a zoom feature, they only have a focus feature. So no matter how much I turn the lens thingy around, it just goes in and out of focus, but it's not actually a zoom function. If you want a zoom lens, then you need to buy a lens designed to zoom, but then you lose some of the macro capabilities of macro lenses. To make my nails close up to the screen, I'd have to raise my nails this high or get a different tripod that allows the camera to go closer to the ground. Remember that crappier tripod that breaks really easily? It actually adjusts to a good height with a smaller 40 millimeter lens. Basically, you have two main options if you have a DSLR. Use a smaller, cheaper lens with a crappier tripod or a much better but way more expensive lens with a better tripod. But if you spent all your money on nail polish, nail mail, then you might have to go with the cheaper lens. I edit my videos in iMovie, which is a very straightforward program that comes with any Apple computer. Even if you have a PC, there's many iMovie equivalent programs designed for Windows computers. In iMovie, on the left-hand pane, I've created a video library and called it Dotacure. Hit Import Media. You'll see the little pie chart loading. And then select the video files that you want to import. Hit Import Selected. Just ignore this flaky video that I was making previously. And you're gonna hit File, New Movie. I never use a theme. There's different themes you can use and then name your movie whatever you want. Scroll through your film and pick whatever sections you wanna include in your video. So I'm just gonna add some brush porn here. To speed it up or slow it down, click on the little turtle thing and you'll see options of making it fast, slow, or custom, which I like to use, where you can pick your own percentage. There's also a whole bunch of other functions, like muting the sound, which I like to do in my videos because I put music on them, changing the panning or the cropping of the video, and a whole lot of other good stuff. Most things people want to know is how to add a watermark. So it's really quite simple in iMovie. You just go to Titles, and then I usually pick the one that says lower third, as it means it's going to appear at the bottom of the movie. You lay it over your film, and you hit the text button to edit the text and type in whatever you want. You can add any clips you want from your film roll, and you can trim them in the timeline, which is that bottom interface thing. To add music, you just hit iTunes, if you have iTunes, that is. I don't know what it would say if you don't. All the songs you have in iTunes will be there and you can use the little search thing at the top if you're looking for a specific one, but I'll just take a random one. And then you pick the section of the music track that you want to add to your video and you can crop it in the timeline too. To export your video, this is important, you go to File, Share, File, 
and then it's going to give you a preview of what your video is going to be and it's going to say the size. I always pick 720p because doing it this size means that once it's a 15 second clip, it will never exceed the 25 megabyte attachment required to send myself the video by email. You can use the higher resolution one if you're going to upload to YouTube though. You can change the name if you want, pick where to save it, and hit save. It'll make your movie, and then it'll tell you when the file export is complete. So then you can find your video wherever you saved it, and it saves as an mp4 file, which is compatible on all social media platforms. And there it is. To share your video on YouTube, you literally just hit upload. And yeah, I'm going to stop there. But to upload it to Instagram, which is what most people want to know, you literally just send it to yourself. If you're using Gmail, then Gmail allows up to 25 megabyte attachments. All of my 15 second videos, which is the time cap for Instagram video posts, are under 25 megs, so I can easily send them through Gmail. Then hop on your iPhone or iPad or Android or whatever phone you're using to upload stuff to Instagram. Go to your email, download the video, and post it. It's really that simple. Now that you have amazing nail videos made, how do you get more followers with them? I only know enough about Instagram on this. Facebook hates me. But here's my number one tip. Use feature hashtags. Feature accounts are accounts that feature others' videos. Here's some great ones that I know of. When you read their bio, you'll notice that most of them tell you which hashtag to use. Like this account that has a massive following, and there's so many others like it. Hey, that's me! Don't get discouraged if they don't repost your video right away. Sometimes they'll repost videos of mine from months ago, so it's really kind of random. And lastly, there's my new feature account where I share nail videos but also nail humor posts because we didn't really need just another nail video feature account, did we? Phew, that was the longest however many minutes of your life. Just for that, here's my top six tips for making amazing nail video tutorials. Do it right. Get a real camera or at least a point and shoot, and don't use your phone. Don't be shaky, get a tripod. Good lighting, I can't stress this enough. Invest in some good bulbs, they're really not that expensive. Backgrounds, just think about the possibilities. Editing, do it right with a computer program and forget about apps. If you really must use an app, I've heard that people use these, but don't hold me to it. Share, share, share your amazing hard work and dedication, because after all, you just wasted hours of your life. And one last thing, it's no surprise that I have no advice to give on how to do voiceovers because clearly I struggled with that with this video. If you like this video, or at least just like my cat being in it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching!